Hello and welcome to the FMCC webinar, Partnering for Excellence, presented by Mike Petersky. Next slide, please. I do want to let everyone know they have been muted for audio quality. If you do have any questions during this webinar, please feel free and type them into the question box and we'll review them during the Q&A portion at the end of the webinar. Also, I would like to let you know that this webinar is being recorded and will be posted to the FMCC website, fmcc.ifma.org. Also, next slide. This is the FMC's vision and mission statement. We always just like to make people aware, aware of the purpose of the FMCC. Next slide, please. And the FMCC provides many services to the FM community, such as Ask the Expert, find a consultant, locate a speaker, and online educational resources. You may find more information on their website, fmcc.ifma.org. Next slide. And as always, we would like to thank the sponsors of the council. Next slide. And I want to thank everyone for joining us for the celebration of World FM Day, which we are actually making more into World FM Week. Next slide, please. We are doing 30 sessions over the course of four days. And those um, people are presenting from all over the world. Next slide, please. We've gone through New Zealand, Australia, the Middle East, Europe, and now we're back to North America. We'll cycle through again. So I do encourage you to join us at some point over the four days. And this is just a snapshot of some of the people that we'll be presenting over the course of that time period. Next slide, please. And then what you are here for, our presenter, Mike Petersky. He is the FM innovator at KRL Connections. He's also the founder of the DC-based marketing agency, KRL Solutions. He has a passion for elevating the FM profession and is the host of the Facility Management Innovator podcast on iTunes, Google Play, and online. He also served in a variety of leadership roles at the IFMA Capital Chapter in the D.C. area. And Mike focuses on helping organizations deliver workplace innovations to the facility management community. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Mike. Mike, the floor is yours. Thank you, Joshua. Hey there, and how's it going, everyone, wherever you may be around the world? This is really exciting stuff. I am honored to be here, and I think we can all agree that this is a unique opportunity, and I am looking forward to chatting with the FM Innovator Nation. The workplace is changing rapidly, folks. It is not just about change. As we know, it's about transformation and transforming the ways that we care for the built environment. So we all know that technology is advancing incredibly fast, and I believe that building a true culture of collaboration and creating trusted partnerships are the keys to success as we face the future together. So our objectives for this session are shown on the screen here. I'm not going to read them, but we are going to explore ways to leverage industry resources to grow our careers and to elevate our FM community. We need to work together to accomplish this, and we'll find success when we build our personal networks, expand our professional knowledge, and when we find the courage to get outside of our comfort zones and deliver innovative solutions, we will elevate the FM profession and bring value to our organizations. So that's what most interests me. The part of this that is most exciting to me and fascinates me really is the human side of this equation, our human nature. How do we get inspired to do what must be done during our FM journeys? That is what this webinar is all about. And my hope is at the end of our time together, you will be inspired too and motivated. You can do this, folks. I trust that you'll gain some confidence and be able to deliver a compelling story to your colleagues, your organization leadership, and really to anyone who asks about your role and the role you play in the FM community. So who is watching this webinar? I wonder. There are probably quite a few facility management professionals out there, I assume, and I welcome you. It's been my honor over the last eight to nine years since I first joined IFMA to get to know many of you. You've taught me so much about the critical role that facility managers play in the workplace and the challenges you all face each day. So I have a tremendous respect for what you do. I do hope that some of our FM industry partners are also joining us today. I hope you're out there because there is stuff for you to hear on this webinar as well. I hope you will better understand some of the challenges that FMs face in the marketplace today and how you not be part of the problem, but be part of the solution. So whether you are a professional or an associate, I really believe that we must evaluate 
our current goals and our positions personally, our perspectives, and do what I call check our default setting and find ways to build meaningful partnerships and embrace this culture of collaboration in our FM community. That's what qualifies us to be uh, on this webinar today. And if you are any of those things, actually, who, who is qualified to be on this podcast? I, I say podcast, I slipped this webinar today. Everybody's laughing out there who knows that I'm a podcaster. We're going to talk about that. Don't worry. We'll get there. But anybody who's qualified to be on this webinar today, human beings, all of you, we all qualify. So good stuff coming your way for, for everybody out there. So how did I get here? Why am I presenting today? I'm not an FM practitioner, and I am not an FM service provider. Did the FMCC make a mistake, Joshua? I don't know. Maybe they... Uh, didn't realize that I was the one leading this discussion for World FM Day. No, I hope not. I certainly think that what I have to say today will bring value to everyone in our FM community, and I certainly hope so. I do have some background, though, to share with you. I do have a background in sales and marketing, and I do understand the perspective of many that are trying to sell products and services in the FM marketplace and trying to get your attention out there if you are an FM practitioner. So I understand what they're trying to do. I know that some of them do it very well, very professionally. They educate and they offer valuable expertise, and others, not so much. Unfortunately, some are still approaching things from a very transactional motive and a quick sale mentality. So I will speak about that and hopefully inspire some change on the associate member side of the aisle. But what I did used to do and what I am used to is something called relationship selling, and I think that's still relevant today, we're still valid today. People do get to know each other, they build trust, and they find ways to do business together, but really, it's just not enough. In today's world, in today's marketplace, it is not enough. The tech boom took care of that. As products and services became more and more complex over the last decade or two, and the growth of the internet, there's just so much information online now, so much available, that we have to find out who our partners are gonna be. It's, it's overwhelming, almost. So we can't just find out who we like and trust and then find a way to do business. We have to really evaluate our potential business partners, and those industry partners must prove their value to the FM practitioners. And FMs must sell their ideas internally. It's not just a matter of making a decision and running with it. You've got to be salespeople too, and you've got to be able to justify often to an internal committee or to the C-suite, your leadership, any buying decisions that you want to make. So... We often do hear that everyone's a salesperson today, and I really believe that we can help each other achieve these goals by building meaningful partnerships and implementing the solutions that deliver innovation to the workplace. So when I founded my marketing agency, KRL Solutions, almost 14 years ago, I, found, I went from being a, a sales rep for a very large printing company to being out on my own where I actually was the salesperson, but I was also on the other side of the aisle. I was the one being sold too. I was buying products and services. So I have experienced it from your side of the table, FMs. I know what it's like to be approached by vendors. I know what it's like to be sold to. And I know what it's like to have to evaluate and make a decision on who to work with. So I can give you some perspective from both the buyer and the seller side of the aisle. And it was about nine years ago when I was invited for the first time to an IFMA event. And at that time, I had no idea what a facility manager was, so I do apologize for that. But over these last nine years or so, you all have really opened my eyes to the amazing world of facility management and what it takes to manage the workplace. And I so very much respect and, and see what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So fast forward to today, and after many years of serving here on the board at the Capital Chapter of IFMA, I do admire and appreciate the FM profession, and I've really tried to find ways to bring some value and help bring solutions to the workplace by promoting partnerships and creating opportunities for collaboration in our FM community, which has led me to my new passion, which is what I want to share with you. I slipped up, spoiler alert already, I mentioned the podcast. It's something that started last fall, and it is kind of a dream come true. Actually, it didn't start last fall. Let me go back. It started a long time ago. It started back when I was in high school. Yes, that is me. Late 1980s style. Full-blown mullet haircut. Just a kid with a dream, folks. I used to love 80s new wave music. You can see my In Excess t-shirt there. That great band from Australia. Anybody out there watching from down under? Wouldn't that be cool if someone was actually watching this webinar of me in the 80s with my In Excess t-shirt? That big face in the background, of course, is Billy Idol. 
another one of my favorites. And if you look really close to the far right, that's the picture of Adam Ant. I used to love Adam and the Ants. So again, I dreamed of being a DJ, a new wave rock music DJ. And now, all these years later, look at me now. The, the FM Innovator podcast has been around for several months. We just launched episode 37. It's a weekly show that talks about building a culture of collaboration and delivering innovative solutions to the workplace. And we try to have a little fun along the way. You know, when I first started about, I thought maybe a few dozen of my closest friends would listen in and it would just be, you know, a lot of fun. A few members from the local chapter might be interested. I could interview some folks and we could have a little a good time. But here we are just a short time later and literally thousands of listeners from all around the world are tuning into the show on a weekly basis. So if you are one of them and if you are out there watching this webinar, I cannot begin to thank you. Thank you so much for making my dreams come true. I am really genuinely humbled to play just a small part in sharing these FM stories and hopefully bringing some inspiration to our community and helping to use this podcast platform to elevate the FM profession. And what's interesting is that I've discovered a lot of different themes about our profession over these last several months. The interviews I do, there's a lot of different commonalities that come about when I'm interviewing people. And one of these themes actually ties nicely with the World FM Day theme this year. As Joshua mentioned, it's enabling positive experiences. And that's certainly a priority for the FM profession. And my most recent guest talked a lot about this. Check out this morning's episode just released today. Jeremy McDonald from Adobe Software is on the episode. And that was released. And he uh, talks about building a workplace experience over at Adobe. Really interesting stuff. And before I get too far, I also want to give a big thank you to my fellow Capital Chapter board member and my co-presenter from back at Facility Fusion US just a few uh, weeks ago. She is my friend, Lena Thompson of American Psychological Association. Lena's been involved with the chapter for a long time, involved with IFMA for a very long time. She's an educator. She teaches the FMP course at a community college right here outside of Washington, DC. And many of the concepts that I will share with you during this webinar are truly a reflection of my collaboration with Lena as we were putting together a presentation called Partnering for Excellence, coincidentally, for Facility Fusion. So credit where credit is due. Thank you, Lena. So let's talk about the state of affairs in our FM community. Here is a quick poll question. Joshua, if you will work your magic, please let me know, everyone watching and listening, what statement here best describes your view of the relationships you have experienced between FM industry service providers and FM practitioners in today's marketplace. So the first one is vendors are just trying to sell me something, but we need them at, at we certainly need them at times, so they're mostly viewed as a necessary evil at our organization. Secondly, when we have a specific need, we will put out an RFP and gather information, um, but we'll learn all we need to know, get costs, and make a decision about what we do kind of do that all internally. The third one here is we view our suppliers as trusted partners that are the experts in their field and our organization counts on them to bring the latest information and innovations to us. And finally, maybe all of the above, maybe not one of those covers it, but you've experienced all three. Please cast your votes now. Okay, Mike. We have actually a fairly even split. 33% said vendors are just trying to sell me something. 33% said we view our suppliers as trusted partners. 33% said all of the above. And zero said um, when we have a specific need. Okay. All right. Well, that's where I kind of expected a, a mixed result. And all of the above I thought would be the most popular because really it depends, right? It depends on who you're dealing with. It depends on the personalities involved and the people involved the human beings involved. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And hopefully, as we discuss some of the strategies to move us more towards number three, where we do have trusted partnerships. And again, it takes work from both sides of the aisle, and we'll talk about that. So why do we need partnerships? Well, I mentioned it earlier. I alluded to it. The workplace evolution, or it might even be called the workplace revolution, as Lena and I joked about recently. Changes are coming at us so fast, it feels like things are actually accelerating each year, and it really just seems hard to keep up, doesn't it? You may at times feel overwhelmed with the need to stay on top of all the new technologies available for your facilities, as well as all the changes in our corporate cultures. 
And those new norms in human behavior, with all the generational shifts, there's just so much to be mindful about these days. Now, I do not expect you to look to me to answer all these questions about technology. I am aware of many of the different tools, the Internet of Things, AI. I've heard all about CMMS and IWMS systems, but I am not an expert on technology tools specifically. What I like to focus on is the philosophical questions. And remember, everyone listening out there is a human being, right? We agreed on that. So I want to encourage you to know that it's okay to acknowledge the fact that there really is no way to keep up with all of these changes and all these technological advances. There's just too much for any one person to manage by themselves. So we need connections. We need to lean on each other to get where we must go. So with that said, there is so much great content, as I mentioned out there, at the click of a mouse. Even this webinar, here we are, it's a week-long webinar, great event put on by the IFMA FM uh, Consultants Council, over 30 sessions, but there's so many good ones. How do you decide which ones to stop and listen to? That's a lot of time. I think Joshua is the only one who has to listen to them all. So the other ones, all the rest of us have to decide which one's most pertinent to my situation and, and how can I decide where to uh, spend my time. So sometimes we feel like there's too much information out there. So we need to prioritize, lean on our partners to be experts, and we cannot possibly know it all ourselves. And then finally, we're going to talk about building a business case. When you do identify a technology or a new innovative solution that will absolutely benefit your organization, how do you communicate its value internally to your leadership? You have to sell ideas. And as I said earlier, we're all salespeople in one way or another. So we're going to talk about all these things. But before we get too far, let's get some inspiration from some of the great partnerships throughout history. Be encouraged by them. Here we go. First one, these guys. I can't hear you all on the webinar, but I know you're shouting at the top of your lungs. That's the Wright brothers. That's right. Or should I say, wait, that's correct. I shouldn't say the Wright brothers are right. Wilbur and Orville. And you know which one's Orville? The guy with the mustache. That would be the sharp-looking dude on the left. Wish I could grow a mustache, but as you saw, that would be impossible. The picture you saw of me proves it. So we get to fly around the world today routinely. We do it without any much thought, and we get to go to all these IFMA conferences, and it's really amazing that this partnership made that possible. Let's try another one. How about these guys? You got it. The two Steves, Waz and Jobs, the founders of Apple Computer. And you know what I like about this, this partnership? What's great about it is they're a perfect example of how two very different people with totally different personalities and skill sets can come together and create what today, of course, is one of the most valuable companies, if not the most valuable brand in the world. And what's amazing is many of us think of Steve Jobs as the mastermind behind Apple, but because that's just because he was the outspoken marketing guy. Without Steve Wozniak's engineering mind and his quiet work ethic and production capabilities early on in the history of Apple, it wouldn't have become the company it is today. So I find that fascinating that this partnership was necessary to get that company off the ground. Very quickly, in the music world, we think of partnerships. It's often a big part of the creative output of some of the most innovative and successful bands throughout history. Whether you like them or not, Lennon and McCartney, really amazing. They're shown here, and they were the uh, those that wrote most of the songs for the Beatles. And I often think of my favorite band of all time. You know them, you love them. From Dublin, Ireland, U2. Wouldn't it be cool if someone from Dublin, Ireland was actually listening to this webinar? Anyway, we all know Bono is the outspoken lead singer and frontman for the band U2, but without those other three guys with The Edge and, and Adam and Larry Mullen Jr., they could, he couldn't do what he does as lead singer. So it's a partnership. It brings out the best, most creative parts in ourselves. And finally, I can't let this moment go by without bringing up one more partnership, my favorite partnership because it's from my favorite movie of all time. That's right, Star Wars. Those of you who know me, they know Star Wars is the greatest movie in history. And this partnership came out of that movie. C-3PO and R2-D2, saving the universe a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Awesome. Okay, so when I need inspiration, when, making, uh, when facing challenges in the workplace, in my modern day workplace, in my career, I often turn to this guy. This is Seth Godin. He's known to many of us in the marketing world as a marketing guru. And he has written, I think it's like 18 books 
by now, and he writes a daily blog with some really fascinating thoughts about the marketplace and about human nature and about behavior. And he offers many insights about what drives things, what drives things to be innovative and what drives the change in the world today. And so, yeah, he's definitely qualified to be a guru. And here are some what I call Seth Godinisms. And I want to see if you agree. So the first one is what Seth calls the myth of quick. It may seem like with all this new te technology and the workplace evolution taking place all around us that everything's going by really, really fast. We've already acknowledged that. And we feel like sometimes we're going to walk into the office tomorrow and everything's going to be changed, right? Well, Seth says the truth of the matter is that the culture takes years to create and the culture takes years to change. So even though there's this evolution or revolution going on, you can take some small sense of relief in knowing that it's not going to happen overnight. We do have time. Even so, we do need to change. And uh, whoops, I need to go back. How do I backspace here? We need to go. Um, we need to uh, change, and we need to prepare to do so. So, though Seth also says the magic wand store is closed. You can't expect instant results. So, whatever you do, Seth says, you got to take heart in that habits, long-term habits, will beat interventions every time. You should avoid the crash diet. Fear the stock that's sure, surely to double overnight. Be skeptical of any new technology that's surely revolutionary and that's absolutely going to change things tomorrow. Walk away from any consultant who says they can transform your organization in one fell swoop. There are innovations and there are moments that lead to change, but that change happens over time. The quote, instant win, is largely a myth. So again, take heart in the fact that we do have time to adjust, but we cannot just sit back and relax. We can't stay in our comfort zones. And that's this third one here, the safety zone and the comfort zone. Seth often talks about this, and I love this. As human beings, we're wired to find safety. We have our fight or flight instinct, right? The sample Seth gives is that of a mouse in the dark, in the middle of the kitchen, on the floor. Because it's dark and the mouse thinks he's safe, safe he sits there peacefully. But as soon as the kitchen light goes on, he immediately runs for the safety of that little hole in the wall. And we as humans are kind of similar. When we feel or see something equivalent to the light coming on in the kitchen, when that happens in our workplace, maybe it's a new technology is introduced or an idea is passed down for doing business in a new way or some other significant change in policy takes place, what do we do? We might find ourselves reacting negatively and fearing the change. It's what I call our default setting. We all want to get back to where we're comfortable. We want to get back to doing what we know. We want to make it um, get back to that place where we're most comfortable. And, and we think that's the safest place to be, like the mouse. But Seth Godin says that, too, is another myth. The safest place for you in your career and in this evolving workplace is actually outside of your comfort zone. We can't stand by and let all these changes leave us behind. In fact, if you are to stay relevant as an FM professional, you must be uncomfortable at times because that is when you're actually the safest. I've heard it said that, quote, we need to be comfortable being uncomfortable if we're to keep up in the marketplace today. I hope you agree. So how do we do that? We need to engage with fellow FMs. We have this understanding that part of our human nature is that we recognize our default setting wants to hold us back, and we can really start working to overcome some of the challenges we face by building our personal business networks. So regardless of your role in the FM industry, we all share common experiences, and we know that stepping outside of our comfort zone is the first step if we're going to create successful partnerships. Now, networking is a learned skill, so don't be discouraged if it's not your strong suit today. There are practical ways to work on this and improve ourselves when it comes to having positive human interactions. And it takes practice to get to where we want to go. And I do believe that face-to-face -face networking opportunities are absolutely essential. And we're going to talk about this more shortly. But of course, there are other ways to connect with folks, especially today with technology online. I think LinkedIn is a powerful way to connect with fellow practitioners and to expand your business network. So I don't diminish that. I definitely think LinkedIn is more than just an online resume or job searching tool. It's really become a professional way to communicate and connect. So I believe it'd be great if we could all embrace this platform and commit to making use of it whenever possible. It's really cool because your LinkedIn feed, you know, becomes more 
personalized and curated just for you with valuable content based on your preferences and what you've liked and which groups you've uh, joined and and people you've connected with. So that that is something that they are doing a good job using basically artificial intelligence to to serve up the most relevant information. So LinkedIn is a powerful tool for you to reach out and connect with FM colleagues and also make connections that really are a powerful resource to you as you have to face challenges. So we'll talk more about that as well shortly. We have an amazing facility management community through IFMA and with other organizations around the world. And they offer many opportunities for professional interactions that help us grow in our careers and pursue an understanding of the technologies and solutions that are available out there to us. So while LinkedIn and webinars like this one or this virtual conference is great, I think that in today's workplace, it's still essential to have face-to-face -face collaboration because it's just not easily duplicated online. I mean, right now I'm struggling because I love to have conversations on my podcast. I interview people. It's back and forth. It's banter. It's where people go with the conversation that leads me to where I go next. But here I am talking unilaterally to you all, and it's very challenging. I hope the information I'm providing is helpful, and I look forward to your questions at the end. But it's not ideal when it comes to really collaboration. So that face-to-face -face cannot be replaced. I further believe that getting outside of your office and finding personal engagement opportunities should really be a high priority because it's, again, the most effective way to learn and to grow and to build in your competence as an FM professional or whatever your role in the community. And it's tough, though. I understand it's tough to event, uh, attend events in person. I mean, here in our Washington, D.C. area, the traffic is horrendous. It's so bad that some of our local members would have to travel three to four hours and take that much time out of their day just to get to a, an hour-long lunch program, for example. And that's just not practical for many of us. So we as leaders in the community, as those of us trying to elevate the profession and put out valuable information and content, we need to work harder and be more creative about finding ways to bring so much amazing value to these events that it's worth the time, or we just need to find ways to make these events more accessible. Because I do not want to lose that personal, in-person interaction. So yes, do people still meet in person? Absolutely. Now I understand that there's pressure that comes from our daily responsibilities, especially if you have a role in facility management, and it can be a real challenge to try to decide to leave your buildings for an extended period of time. But I am, again, absolutely convinced that attending the right IFMA conferences and other local events is just an essential part of your personal and professional development. So I want to encourage you to do your best to plan in advance, have a strategy for success so we can make the most of these opportunities and get the most return for our investment of time at events like World Workplace, Facility Fusion, and other industry gatherings. There's just no doubt that the personal connections that we make at these IFMA conferences, through the industry councils, the communities of practice, they're just irreplaceable. So I find it incredibly valuable in growing and expanding our networks, which then leads to the ability to face problems that require a solution, and you'll have that strong personal network to lean on. So one does lead to the other. But in times when you don't have someone to lean on, we're thankful that we do have some other resources, such as IFMA's Knowledge Library, and that's quickly becoming an extremely valuable source for industry content, articles, white papers, best practices, and other professional support tools. In fact, I'm excited to to share some episodes of the FM Innovator podcast with the Knowledge Library, and I hope that'll be a good source of information and some encouragement as well. What we're trying to do on that podcast is not just provide valuable informational content, but inspiration and, and really motivation to keep us all moving in the right direction. So we hope to do that through the Knowledge Library. And lastly, it's just absolutely more than just a simple Google search when you're trying to research a complex FM problem these days. So we want to be able to narrow down that focus and, and find the solutions we need. And the IFMA marketplace, I really believe, whether it's the national, uh, international one at IFMA.org or your local chapters marketplace, you're going to be able to find some industry partners in your FM community that can help you solve these problems and bring solutions to the table. And, it, and what's really cool about that tool, you can search by a number of different keywords or location or uh, whether it's an IFMA member or a corporate sustaining partner, you'll help. You'll have ways to help vet your, uh, do the vetting process and find uh, potential industry partners to work with. 
So of course, career growth requires an investment in your continuing education. This is not my strong suit. If Lena was here, she would of course share with you the value of IFMA credentials and her passion for educating FM professionals. So I will leave it at that. IFMA is certainly the place to go for industry knowledge and certifications. So I do encourage you to grow in your career, get your FMP, your CFM, your SFP, whatever it might be, so you can continue to stay uh, on top of the latest industry trends. But what I'm focused on mostly, what I'm most passionate about, as I mentioned before, is really building this culture of collaboration in our FM community. And part of that is really making the most of not just local events, the how-tos for local events, but also when you do go to a big conference, the big IFMA World Workplace or Facility Fusion. This is something that both FMs and industry partners need to take, make the most of, and let's talk about it now. I really think we're a people-driven business, so I believe it's important for practitioners to take a risk and leave their comfort zones and attend some of these events, maybe a happy hour, maybe a, a straight-up networking event where they can meet industry connections, even if it's not something they're very comfortable with. I think meaningful conversations do take place organically at these events, and you will be better off for going there. But rest assured, I know it's not always pleasant, and it is my mission to make sure that our industry partners or the vendors who are still doing things the old-fashioned way become industry partners, because we know that you don't want to be sold to. You don't want to have those old-school sales techniques I alluded to earlier that make it an uncomfortable event. So it's my job to really help educate and bring along our industry partners to prevent that from happening, okay? I promise to do my best. So if we can meet in the middle here. For example, if your default setting is to be a little bit more reserved, want to try to step outside your comfort zone and make an effort to initiate a conversation when you go to an event. Maybe prepare in advance, check out the attendee list and have a plan uh, to target a particular industry partner who has a certain expertise you might be interested in. It's okay to have an agenda to set some specific, you know, kind of goals for yourself to gather certain information from that expert when heading out to these engagements. And if you're more outgoing, if say you're on the associate side of the aisle, it's your job to be in business development or sales and you're just an extrovert and you're going a mile a minute and you like to talk, 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 if that's your nature, I ask you to do the opposite. Take a step back. Ask some questions. Ask a lot of questions. Resist the urge to jump in with all of your information, with your business cards, your brochures, whatever. I know that with some effort from both sides, we can find ways to meet in the middle, collaborate, and create some meaningful partnerships. Now, I believe that industry partners are uniquely qualified to offer information and training about specific technologies and trends that are in the marketplace today. And most FM practitioners I have met, they do recognize that they cannot possibly hope to develop expertise about each and every facet of their workplace responsibilities. So, we all agree that leveraging our industry resources is essential to understanding the options available to us, and if we need to to um, leverage those resources to get the help we needed when implementing the best solutions for our, our organizations. So when there's an immediate need to solve a problem, you may find that the most productive first call is to an industry partner who really is an expert in that area. And they have the information you may need, whether it's information about their other clients, white papers, data about the industry trends or benchmarks. A good industry partner can show you the cost projections and modeling information you need to help build the best business case for any particular solution. So that's why this is one of my favorite quotes. I'll modernize it for today, but Albert Einstein said, try not to become a person of success, but rather to become a person of value. And I believe that if we do that, if we're constantly looking, constantly looking for ways to prove our value, and I'm talking to both industry partners out there proving their value by providing value to their customers, but I'm also talking to FMs. You need to provide value to your employees, your occupants, your organization. So whoever you're trying to serve, you're providing a value proposition. And I think we need to be people of value first, and then what we think of as success in our careers will follow later. Now we've had some success here at our local chapter with something called Collaborate. See what I did there? I replaced the ATE with a, the number eight. Pretty snazzy, huh? Yeah, right. Anyway, the Collaborate program was an effort by our chapter to encourage industry partners to present their expertise in a way that provides FM practitioners with the information they need while proving the partner's value to the FM community. 
And the difference between this and a typical professional development or education program in the chapter was we allowed the industry partners to host the event, talk freely about their brand and their specific client examples, and really entrusted them to not make it a sales pitch, but to be responsible and share information. And again, we had some success with this. Uh, IFMA fellow Rich Finelli is from our local chapter here. Many of you know him. I think he's doing one of these virtual webinars. He has no problem after years and years of proving his value in the IFMA community. He got up there and offered some incredible information about space planning. And the, the FMs who came to that event were, were very pleased with what we did with that. So if we have some new partners coming in, we may have to educate them that it's, that it's not an old school sales pitch. But I really consider that to be, again, my responsibility. And I'm working hard to get those that would be my marketing clients to buy into this approach of really bringing value through their messaging. So let's pause here real quick to see how we're keeping up. I think we're about halfway through a little bit more coming to the uh, home stretch, but I want to do a gut check here. I mean, how do you feel listening to all this? I mean, we've agreed that we're all in the same boat, right? No matter whether you're a FM practitioner or an industry partner, we all need to keep up with the new ways of doing business. Again, we're all human. We have to lean on each other. Does anybody remember the book, Who Moved My Cheese? Of course, I can't see anybody raising their hand, but... If you haven't read it or if it's been a while, I do recommend it. It's a great quick read and it basically tells the story of our human nature. And it's, story, it's done through an, a, a mouse. Again, uh-oh, it's the second reference to a mouse story in this webinar. I'm not sure how that happened. But this mouse goes out into a maze each day and he knows exactly where to find his big pile of cheese. And he's comfortable. He's happy. And then one day he goes out into the maze to the usual spot and yikes, the cheese is gone. Change has come into his workplace, right? And it hits him where it hurts. I mean, there's, there's no cheese. So what's he going to do? And the book goes on to explain that he's got several options. He could keep showing up at that same old spot every day and hope the cheese will miraculously reappear for him. Or he can decide to be uncomfortable and he can venture out into new areas of the maze and try new, new opportunities and try to find a new pile of cheese. I think it's an awesome metaphor for what we face in our workplaces today. But I know it can be scary. It is, it is, makes us afraid at times because there's some universal truths about human nature such as we don't like change and we can't control it and therefore we fear it. And again, referring back to the safety zone, comfort zone example from Seth Godin, we're designed to stay in our safety zone to be comfortable to protect us. But these default settings sometimes could be hurting us because again, it's keeping us from going where we need to go as we face the future and we need to learn to step outside of this, face our fears and realize we're not alone. We're in this together. So let's, let's do it together. There's a blogger named James Clear and he writes a lot about fitness and habit, habits and creating new habits. And that's really tough because changing our habits is one of the hardest things we can do as human beings. And when that feels like a big challenge, some good advice that he offers us when we're feeling overwhelmed is just lay a brick. So what he meant by that was, Rome was not built in a day, but they were laying bricks every hour. So wherever you are in this journey, please be encouraged because maybe you feel like you haven't done enough to keep up. Maybe you're you know, not leveraging the connections out there like you should be. You're not engaged with experts at this point. It's never too late to start, and you really can begin laying some bricks one at a time today or tomorrow. But maybe you feel, hey, pretty good. You've, you've been doing pretty well so far. You've had some success. Maybe you've gotten along pretty well on your own at this point. Um, we must be prepared for the ups and downs that will come as we face the future of the built environment together. And that's why I love this quote from Winston Churchill. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. I think that pretty much is self-explanatory. No embellishment from me needed on that one. So again, partnering for excellence is what it takes to be effective at building a true culture of collaboration in our FM community, a place where industry partners are recognized by facility managers as an essential source for industry knowledge. By bringing this model of collaborative thinking to our community, we can create an environment that is less adversarial, resulting in more win-win scenarios for both our FM professionals and associate members. So we worked hard here again at the local level at the Capital Chapter of IFMA to create what we call our Partnering for Excellence Sponsorship Program. And one of our benefits here is we do an annual 
expo type event. This one's called the Partner Innovations and FM Networking Event. And it just gives our annual partners an opportunity to showcase their expertise while providing our FMs a chance to learn about the true value of these providers, what they deliver, and for them to stay informed about the latest industry trends. Lena has also created a similar innovative event at her APA office. The association brings in their business partners and they are welcome to engage with the APA staff and this has shown some great results and it certainly is it's similar to some other expo events but it really allows for that recognition that human connection to take place and she will you know testify to the success of that program over and over again so i think everybody should take advantage of these opportunities whether locally or at the larger ifma conferences and the expos put on at world workplace or fusion or what have you whatever the format I think that forward-thinking marketers understand that the old-school techniques for sales that I talked about are just not effective anymore and that content is king now. Successful industry partners know that reaching potential clients now requires a very long-term strategy of information sharing and communication about their expertise through modern web-based channels. Partners need to prove their value, and it is becoming quite easy to see which companies have taken this new marketing philosophy seriously and which ones are still relying on those old techniques. So here are just a few examples of some companies that I have seen that are doing it right. They're doing things right. They're providing videos, webinars, podcasts, and other resources to our FMs. So you can be better equipped to evaluate options and you can accelerate the decision making process and move forward with successful implementation of valuable and innovative workplace solutions. Whether or not it comes from these companies, they're willing to put the information out there and be a source for education and it's, it's not a quid pro quo. You don't have to buy from them to get this information. So when it comes to selling ideas, here's our friend a friend of mine, a guest on the podcast not too long ago, I think of this great conversation I had with him. Many of you will recognize him from the FM Consultants Council. It's Michelle Terrio from up in Canada. And I asked Michelle about the fact that, hey, many of our FM practitioners come from a background that is not typically, uh, they're not typically trained in the art of sales, yet they must present a business case for new workplace solutions to their leadership. And I really believe that understanding some of the basic sales techniques can be really helpful. And Michelle agreed, and he, he actually shared this quote with me. He said, the only people in the world who can change things are those who can sell ideas. And this quote came from a woman named Lois Wise. And Michelle uses this quote when he's, tra he's training FMs around the world. He goes around the world and, and trains facility management professionals. And I really agree with him here. I'm glad he's doing it. I hope to do it when I interact with my FM practitioner friends, that there are some real basics, and this, this webinar is part of it. It's part of understanding human nature, the psychology of why we do things we do, why we don't. So it's a really great quote, and I really believe that we all need to sell things. Because again, we're now dealing in this new world. Uh, it's a marketplace of ideas. And as FMs, it's your job to identify the best resources and then deliver the appropriate solutions to your organization. So I believe by collaborating with industry partners and leveraging their available resources, FMs can be better positioned to deliver information to the C-suite in the most effective way. So as I mentioned earlier, you don't have it in your job title. It's not officially part of what you do, but selling to leadership, selling to staff about workplace changes, you, get, you have to be prepared to sell just about everybody inside your organization in one way or another. So, you can certainly explore some social media channels. We talked about LinkedIn. It's a great place to do research. But when the rubber meets the road, it really comes down to offering a new innovative solution. It is really important to have that Rolodex of trusted industry partners to help you prepare your internal presentation because they're the ones that have access to the most appropriate, accurate, time-sensitive information because things are changing so rapidly. Again, you can't know it all. We can't know it all. And our FM industry partners can help. So what do we do when the time does come to sell ideas to leadership and make a recommendation? Here are some things to keep in mind. Of course, you want to be very concise, maybe offer a one-page summary of your business case. And of course, you want to be prepared to answer those tough questions that come back at you once you do make your recommendation. FM should talk in terms of what their organization will gain from this solution, not the benefits to themselves or their FM department. 
Like any good sales conversation, you must be sure to frame the discussion in a way that keeps the decision maker's perspective in mind. So you'll want to highlight how the improved processes will make, from your recommendation, these improved processes will result in a solid return on investment for the organization. You'll also want to describe the implementation process and explain how the solution will be managed even after it's been implemented. Make sure you've thought that through. And finally, just be passionate and really believe in what you're selling. I think any successful salesperson will say that if they really believe in the product or service, they're going to be much more effective at selling it. So do your research and be prepared. Even still, when making a presentation to leadership, some of our human nature will sneak up on us. We've all been down this road. It's something that we've already been talking about here. The fact that when you walk into that boardroom to make your recommendation, you may feel like this. That's right. This is the boardroom on the Death Star from, again, the greatest movie of all time, Star Wars. And that's your CEO. That is the evil Dark Lord himself, Darth Vader. And you have to present your idea to someone who it feels like you're talking to this. And if you make a mistake, heaven forbid you, something, you say something wrong, you might get the old force choke from Vader, like this guy. This poor guy is getting choked. So talk about intimidating. It can really feel like you're going into a situation like this. But remember, we're all the same. We all have the same fears, the same feelings. Inside, we're all just human beings. Even Darth here. You take that scary mask off, and it's this guy. It's just Anakin Skywalker. He's a bit roughed up after all those years of doing the bidding of the evil Galactic Emperor. But he's not beyond redemption, as Luke was able to bring his father back to the light side of the Force. Spoiler alert, that's how it ends. It's Star Wars Return of the Jedi. So anyway, apologies to anybody who hasn't seen it. But again, selling to leadership is really, what, we, what do we want to know? What does the C-suite want to know? Well, let's ask an FM industry legend, another guest from the podcast, our very own Tina Schaus. You love her. You know her. You love her. And when Tina was a guest on the show, she shared many inspirational thoughts and ideas but a big takeaway for me was on this very topic of presenting to leadership. Lena, uh, Tina said, remember the three B's. Be bold, be brief, and be gone. And I'll add one more B. Be an FM innovator. I hope that you will take some courage to innovate in your workplace. But that does sound sometimes even a little bit overwhelming or a little scary. So let me, let me give you a quote from Jack Welch, who's the CEO of General Electric. Jack said, innovation is not necessarily a big breakthrough every time. Innovation is a constant thing. So the good news is you're likely already doing innovation in your workplaces today. You're doing innovative things. You're using your creativity to solve problems, even if they're just little ideas or what seem like small changes. That's what keeps our facilities going. And those small innovations can make for an inspiring, safe, healthy, and engaging workplace for your building's occupants. So continue to keep up the good work. Keep bringing value to your organization. Be an FM innovator. And in summary, we can be successful if we embrace partnerships and build a culture of collaboration in our FM community. We can lean on trusted advisors and experts that are our industry partners. We can leverage online resources and share knowledge with our colleagues. Remember, we can't do any of this alone. We must collaborate and face the future together. And I'll leave you with a final quote from my favorite guru, Seth Godin, here once again. As we talked earlier, stepping outside of our comfort zone is each day. It could be exhausting, not because it's physically taxing on our bodies, but it, it can be emotional labor. It really takes it out of us. So we need to embrace it. because. If what you did today wasn't hard, you did not add enough value because you didn't expose yourself to enough risk and fear. Thank you. Excellent. Great. Thank you, Mike. Um, give me one moment to bring the questions up. And if anyone on the line does have any questions, please feel free and type them into the question box. And I'll be happy to present them. It said, everyone at every age is heads down in the cell phone at conferences. There we are, burrowed into our email, et cetera. Any thoughts on getting our heads up? 
Great question. Great question. I agree. It's something that I have noticed not just with my millennial children, but with my peer group, my colleagues. And it is something that I have been a victim of. I, I have been um, guilty of, I should say. So again, the best chance of breaking that habit, which again is a, is a big part of what we do in our culture today, I think is this idea of getting together in person. It's a lot harder when you're in a, a, an environment such as World Workplace or Facility Fusion and you're having a roundtable discussion or you're even at a networking event, chances are you're not going to pull your phone out and, and be rude. I mean, some people do. It still happens. But again, the more we do face-to-face, -face, the less likely that will be a distraction. I know that during this, how many minutes, Joshua, was it about 50 minutes, me talking directly at people? I'm sure you all were checking your email, checking your phones, which is fine. I just think we have to take time out of our days, our weeks, our um, move away from the the default setting of kind of being isolated and being in our own little world, whether it's it's our mobile device or our computer at the office, and get up, walk around, and have those face-to-face -face conversations. And I think I've seen some encouraging signs from the, the next generation. The, you know, my daughters are very much um, good about putting down the phone at times and, and having those face-to-face -face, um, relationships, interaction with their friends. So be encouraged. It is a problem, but it can be overcome. And I think um, we'll continue to uh, encourage folks to do that. Excellent. Okay, next slide, please. And I just want to let everyone know these are just a few of the upcoming webinars we have this evening. Um, Operations and Maintenance and Health and Safety Collaboration in the 21st Century Workplace by David Reynolds. And then Allison Heller-Ono will be presenting Ask the Expert, a consultant's chat this evening. Next slide. And I just want to let everyone know the FMCC does have an app in both iPhone and Android format. You can pick that up at Google Play or iTunes. Next slide. And the FMCC is always looking for volunteers to help its STAG team. If you have a podcast idea, webinar presentation idea, white paper, et cetera, we'd love to have you on the team. Feel free to contact Ricardo, the STAG chair. His email is on the slide. Next slide. And as always, the uh, FMCC does want to let everyone know about the various chapters and councils. I'm sorry, councils and communities, which Mike actually referenced in his presentation today. About, and they're a great resource for information and also connecting to people in those fields. Next slide, please. And Mike, I want to thank you for a great informative webinar. I want to thank everyone for attending. Have a great World FM Day, everybody.